You know what I really like? Automation. You know why I really like it? Because why wouldn't I? No, but seriously, I I've been using make.com even though this video is sponsored and I appreciate it. I've been using make.com by my own accord for a long time. And one of the great things that it can do is set me up to just not have to do manual clicky clacky typing. When this video is done and this video is recorded, you know what happens? I'll tell you what happens. I can send a message to my team members using it something like this. As you'll see, this morning I recorded a podcast and it said a new episode of the Rise Productive Podcast is ready for you to edit. Now, how did that happen? Well, rather than me being like, hey guys, a new episode of the No, 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 no. This 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 links out to a folder that was captured within my make.com scenario that is always on the lookout for these situations. So if I go into my scenarios, you'll see that I have a lot of different ones made. And there's one called new Rise Perto podcast episode ready to edit. What this does is every single hour or however often you want it to be, I actually have it set to every eight hours because I don't record a podcast every day. This Google Drive instance is looking for a new created item, which would be a folder. And it looks in the specific folder where I would always upload a new instance of the podcast. So in this episode's to edit Rice Bread to Podcast folder anytime that I put a new instance of a podcast in here. My editors know you can, uh, can edit the podcast now, please. Thanks. And guess what? You can do the same thing. It's really easy. It's actually extremely simple. Let me show you how I did it. So we have an example content calendar within here. So let's pretend like we have a podcast and its status is in progress. We're gonna call this a very fun podcast. And we're gonna add a property for a numbering system. So for example, let's just have this be podcast one. Okay. Inside of make.com, it's actually very simple. All we need to do is create a new scenario for a Google Drive instance and pick the option watch folders and then we're going to select by created time and then you're going to find the folder that makes the most sense in your google drive so for example for me i'm going to pick my google share drive on my admin at riseproductive.com account and i'm going to just pick this internal drive now i can pick a specific folder so let's just do the basic one here let's go to podcast that's within the content folder all right now all i need to do next is make a select message that's going to create a message where you can use email or whatever you end up wanting to use communicate it and then i'm going to send a message by selecting from a list you can either send it to a channel or to a person for the purpose of this and not to confuse anybody i'm going to do an instant messaging channel to myself and i'm going to send something that says a new episode of the podcast is ready to edit. And then I'm gonna do something that's very cool that you can do within make.com, which I'm gonna put this left carrot, and then I'm gonna grab the web view link, place it right next to that. And I'm gonna put this bracket, and then I'm going to select the name of the folder, okay? And then close this out with the right carrot. This is essentially gonna do that thing that you saw earlier where it showcased the name of it and hyperlinked it to the folder itself where the file is. Now, next what we're gonna do is we're going to go back to Notion. We're just gonna copy the link to our content calendar database here. Now make sure you do have make.com integrated. I already have the connection set up. It's pretty easy to do. We're just gonna go to Notion. If you wanted to add a new integration, we totally could. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to actually update a database item. And I'm gonna paste in this database ID for yourself. Make sure that you just add the connection. You'd either do it internally or publicly. Public option just makes it easy. All you gotta do is like go through the same kind of onboarding process, which would be selecting your account, selecting the pages, and allowing yourself to pick whatever database it is. I end up just picking something that's broad strokes like under a lot of different pages so I don't have to grab everything over and over again. I just grab everything that's under the main page, like the home page, and then you press allow access and then boom, you get a connection. But for me, I already got it set up. So then you just take these numbers prior to that question mark and get rid of everything prior to the backslash, press enter, click back in, and then boom. Now I was gonna ask you, well, what database item would I, would I use? Well, what you can do is you can add a module or Notion, and you're gonna look 
for the database item. So that database item is gonna be to get database item. We're going to, let's do notion search objects and you're gonna put that database again. And then what you're gonna do is very simply look for where the name is gonna equal the name of the folder. So let's work under the assumption that I'm going to, for example, this folder, that's the podcast folder, make a new folder where I'd put this podcast that's aptly titled a very fun podcast. All right, so let's just make one called a very fun podcast and then have this search for it based off the title. And then once a search module like this finds its thing, you just need to map it to the page ID from that search module. And then a really cool trick is utilizing this connection to add a URL property or just use this link one. And then I'm just gonna rename it Google Drive folder. You see right here, what we can do is then once again, grab that web view link, which is going to be the URL for the Google Drive folder. And then also say, for example, we wanted to change it so that, you know, this was an idea to start. What if once the folder is made, Magically, it also updated the status, that's right, to in progress, because we've recorded it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be mind blown at what this does. If I were me, I would have to do this. I have to put the file in the right place in order for the editors to know where to get it and in order for me to not go crazy. And then I also have to message people. And then I also have to change it in Notion to in progress, and it's nice to have the URL of the Google Drive folder connected, right? Right, when I press run once and I'm in Notion now, you'll see, oh my God, it's a very fun podcast with a Google Drive folder. Don't tell me. Yup, it's linked to the actual Google Drive folder. And yeah, I just got a message from the automation that said, hey buddy, this can you please edit, edit, edit this folder? Thanks. Now you might be saying, that's pretty awesome. And I would say, yeah, I know. That's why I showed you the thing. It's really cool. But not only that, I have other automations in here. I have automations that showcase two people, hey, I got an entire situation set up where when a transcription is made after a video is rendered, it shows. If I, for example, were to render a podcast into this folder, I could have a very similar situation where a Slack message is gonna pop up saying, hey there, ladies and gentlemen, mainly me, cause then my editors don't have to tell me like, hey, I finished the thing. Cause then it's like, hey, you know, I, I, I know you finished the thing. I got an automation that told me to, you focus on doing the work. I don't want you to worry about remembering to message me. That's a little gratuitous, right? We live in 2023, we got robots that can type things. No, we, we don't need, well, we got a, a software that can type things out. That's like a robot, it's an AI. That's a whole story for another day. But seriously, I don't need people to ping me. I can just have this automation system do it for me. And you can use this for so many different things. As you can see as well, I also have an instance where quite literally after it renders out, it automatically transcribes using make.com. Like what are we, what are we doing? We don't need to do work. We just need automation. We need amazing tools like make.com to make our lives that much easier. I just said make a lot. And I'd like to thank Make again for sponsoring this video, but I seriously do use this tool all the time. So if anyone wants any more videos on how I use make.com, please make sure to leave a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to make more content about this. And I'd be more than happy to make videos about how you can improve your productivity even more like this one right here.